if she's a violent person, you don't want a chick that's not violent. Uh, if she sucks with money, you know, you want a woman that's great yeah. with money, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, it's really interesting. Have you read uh, The Millionaire Next Door? Terrific. No, I haven't. The most common uh, car owned by millionaires was actually like a Ford F-150. Most millionaires had never bought a suit more than $500. But one of the things they talk about that was very common amongst millionaires is they were on their first marriage and their wife was actually more stingy with money than they were. It was very common, common practice that happened. You want to hear something funny about the yeah. Ford, what, Ford F-150? There was, a, there was a survey done once on what kind of cars women like the most yeah. you know, for guys to drive, and it was a black Ford F-150. Was, Isn't it funny? Was, was top. Isn't that hilarious? It wasn't a, wasn't a BMW. It wasn't a, a Benz. It was a black Ford F-150. I think, I think fear, Ford had done such a great job, especially in, I grew up in North Texas, in, in uh, aligning their car with masculine behavior, if that makes mm. any sense, right? I feel like yeah, they absolutely. did about being a car that a, a workman would do or somebody who could solve a problem would have a Ford F-150 with a gun rack in the back, you know what I'm saying, and maybe a winch yeah. or something to that effect. Um, the controversial statement, I don't know if you saw, so uh, Rolo and I, we do a show every other Friday called Access Vegas, and, and so every week we've asked uh, the girls the question about whether or not they believe in one of the statements that you have. One of my favorite quotes from you is, mm -hmm. women don't care about your struggles, they wait at the finish line and they fuck the winners. Can you talk mm -hmm. about where you came up with that idea? And I'd, I'd love for your reaction, because we've had seven girls on before uh, just come with their reaction, almost all of them agreed with that, actually. It was really mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, where did you come up with that quote? Yeah, I mean, like women don't have a lot of patience for guys' struggles. Um, then you always hear the arguments, well, you know, I've been with, with my husband for 10, 15 years, and he had this struggle and that struggle, and I never left him and I stuck with him. I'm like, okay, great, right? But what do you look like? What does he look like? You know, did you have options? You know, did he fix a problem? Like there's a lot of outside factors that can contribute that, that may that may make that variable non-existent. But on a balance of probabilities, again, you know, women just don't have time for guys that aren't doing something with their life, right? Oh, you know, my boss was mean to me today. Like, I remember talking to this, like, I used to talk to women often, you know, on dates about why their husband would, um, you know, like why they would split up with their husband. Because when I got out of my divorce, I mean, I did what every other dork does and starts dating, you know, women their own age, which are mostly divorced. And a lot of the stories I heard was, well, you know, he just, you know, he couldn't keep a job down or he couldn't provide or he wasn't, um, you know, this uh, guy was uh, we grew apart all the time. We, yeah, yeah, we, we grew, grew apart. apart is my favorite one. It's like, no, he lost his job, but we grew apart. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, there's lots of those stories. But I mean, the truth of the matter is it all boils down to that simple phase. You know, women don't care about your struggles. They do hang out at the finish line and they pick the winner. I mean, that's what they want. Pick them, fuck them, whatever you want to call it. That's generally what their modus operandi is. Let's go for the guy that has what I want. So what I think is really interesting, so I, I used to work in, well, I still, I still work in the financial community, mostly in stock options. So we deal with normal distributions. And when you say a lot of the stuff, you know, especially with the 20, with the 20 red flags, there probably are some single mothers that you could be with. You talk about this before, but in the normal distribution, the middle 68.27%, what you're saying is correct. As far as what you're saying about women don't care about your struggles, that's not 68.27%. That's 99.9%. .9%. I have found very, because I, I, this is the example I used. Let's go to Walmart. Let's look at the guys stocking the shelves at Walmart. He's struggling way fucking more than me, and none of you care. And when we, went, we had some girls in there, and they're like, well, I would care about my partner's struggles. And I'm like, yes, but he's your partner. That means he had to have at least enough attractiveness and enough you build enough comfort. And ha you had enough value. He had enough value in your eyes for him to become your partner. In order for that to happen, you did not go through all the work he did to get his master's degree, start a set first business, go through bankruptcy, second business, go through the divorce, you know, so whatever horrible injury he had, whatever thing that happened like that. You didn't care about that. You were dating a finished product. And it's funny because we had all these girls come on and we and Rolo and I were kind of expecting them to disagree. And all, none of them did, man. None of them did. It was really interesting. Not very many women will disagree with that. I mean, yeah. they might look, they might try to try to preserve like an image about themselves because they don't want to seem to be that way. But, you know, when you peel back the layers and women become honest, almost all women will agree with that statement. It's a very difficult one to fight. Yeah. Uh, men compete, women choose. I also like this one as well. I mean, it's really interesting, like what we got into a discussion. And the reason why I talk about evolutionary psychology so much is because I like an evidence-based explanation of why men and women 100%. are different. It doesn't mean that we're not equal. I mean, under the eyes of the law, we're equal. But uh, actually, we'll, we'll get into the idea about family law. But when we talk about this, this concept of us being different, for some people, they have a, a serious problem with it. 
with evolutionary psychology, one of the things that I also found with Dr. Buss and Gad Saad and Steven Pinker or whoever is the reason why I, I feel this is the most testable model of psychology and it doesn't really blow up is because people on the right don't like the concept of evolution. People on the left don't like the concept of gender roles. And so we end up in this like middle ground where it's almost like Galileo telling the Pope that the, the earth goes around the sun so they put him on house arrest. It feels mm -hmm. a little bit like that. This is, and it's almost like a red pill truth that a lot of people, even conservative people don't want to hear.